Hey guys, Retro Dude here. Thanks for visiting my channel again, where we take a look at all things retro and cool. Though it might not always be retro, it is always cool. Today we're going to be taking a look at Final Fantasy VI Pixel Remastered. really excited when I heard that they were going to be doing a remaster on this game. Now, in the community, there's a lot of people who actually think that Final Fantasy VI is better than Final Fantasy VII. I know what you're thinking, blasphemy, there's no way that, that that game is better than Final Fantasy VII. Personally, I can't tell you yes it is better or no it's not because I don't remember it enough. However, I will tell you this, I do remember Back in the days when I played Final Fantasy VII, I had already played Final Fantasy VI, and I do remember thinking Final Fantasy VI was better. Now, this was years ago, and I'm excited to see if it's true or not. You know, sometimes there's people who, for example, that when a new movie comes out, say Lord of the Rings, there's a book about it, right? So there's always the person who read the book who always wants to throw the little jab and there's well the books are better you get me so I, I, I'm wondering if that was me back in the days like maybe maybe that's what I thought is because I had already played Final Fantasy 6 that because not everybody played Final Fantasy 6 and everybody was raving about Final Fantasy 7 maybe I just thought well I played Final Fantasy 6 trying to throw that in there and just like those idiots that read just like those people that read books <laughs> And I always want to throw in there's a oh, I read the book. The other thing that I was excited about, I mean, the game is good. Even if it's not better than Final Fantasy VII, the game was a ton of fun to play. It had a lot of different characters with a lot of different play styles to go with it. And the Esper system I really liked. And the story on it was really memorable too. too. I mean, I remember the destruction of the earth. I remember the, the poisoning of a country. I remember the opera scene. I remember the the train ride to purgatory I, I mean the game has a ton of memorable moments and I was excited to see what uh, the pixel remaster was gonna bring to it now when I saw the trailer for it uh, I was excited that uh, the music was gonna be updated uh, if you know me you know I'm a big fan of music and video games and Final Fantasy 6 actually had a really good soundtrack so I was excited to replay this game after so many years. So with that, I wanted to answer a few questions that you might have or I had about the Final Fantasy VI Pixel Remaster. One, is it a good remaster? And is it better than Final Fantasy VII? Is the Pixel Remaster worth it? Once in a while, you get a simple re-release and nothing really special comes of it. And you could just basically play the emulator or play the original cartridge or CD that came out and you're basically the same way out of that so sometimes those $20 price tags just aren't worth it so my first thoughts about the game as soon as I started it up uh, the graphics are improved though n just marginally you can't really tell much of a difference on the graphics the only thing that I saw that actually does make some of a difference is the particle effects so for example when you're slashing uh, the magics uh, they just look a little bit nicer than they did on the final fantasy 6 or 3 which is known here in the states nothing to really change the gameplay aspect of it or even how it looked back then uh, now i can't say that they did have scan lines to it uh, purists know that scan lines uh, back in the days just made the pixelations on the games look smoother so uh, they added that to it just for purists I would say I, I, I'm not a big fan of scan lines I mean they were there and that was the limit of the hardware that we had back then doesn't make them any better I'm fine just playing the version that they gave us whatever shortcomings come with it and they didn't add too many features to it they did add auto battle feature on it uh, which when I learn how to use it, it becomes really useful. So the way it works is you just press a button and it 
starts the auto battle feature and what it does is it takes the last command that you had for that character so customization is on the fly so i like this little feature it's a double-edged sword to be honest uh, one it does make the game flow a lot smoother especially when you're doing the grinding this being a jrpg there's a lot of grinding to be had and this just speeds up things and the other side of it is it speeds up things and yeah you could run through the whole game just doing pretty much the auto attack feature and you're gonna miss out on a lot of the different aspects spells uh, combos commands that you get from the game so my recommendation and the way that I preferred to play it was when I was grinding I was using the auto battle feature and when I wasn't I was just doing a regular active battle mode and it does have an auto save feature <laughs> this is one of those things that you don't know you need until you actually need it yeah, yeah it saved my ass uh, more than once when you came upon an enemy that just auto killed everybody either they petrified them or they turned them into zombies or they were just playing too hard to beat and they completely wiped out your whole party and and have been an hour or so that I was playing it without even saving yeah that would piss the hell out of you and it used to piss the hell out of me uh, back in the Super Nintendo days that you would just lose it's like fucking idiot why did you save but the game actually has an auto save feature and it's pretty consistent like when you go out of a town uh, when you go into a new part of a of a dungeon it auto saves for you so you're not really screwed as badly as you would be uh, if you had you hadn't been playing it for over an hour now music is definitely where this game does shine it updated the music from the old game and it implemented instruments into it so they sound more more like a symphony than it did on the midi days like super nintendo days but it doesn't change the core of it which is very weird <laughs> and, and good yeah, because i am a purist there's just some remasters where the music just didn't click as well as it did back in the days and i do believe that it has a lot to do with people just trying to make their own music from the same beat that it had before this one no the same composer that did final fantasy 6 in the super nintendo actually stepped in and helped do the remixes for the pixel remaster and it shows it's a beautifully done music and as you're playing it you don't even notice that it's updated music it's just so well done huge thumbs up to the developers for what they did on this Now the gameplay is virtually the same on the Final Fantasy VI Super Nintendo and on the Pixel Remaster. That is not necessarily a bad thing. I mean Final Fantasy VI, like I mentioned earlier, has some great scenes in it. So from the get-go, uh, you have a 
bad guy called Kefka. He is so memorable because this guy is completely evil. He poisons an entire country. He just humiliates the, the soldiers that work for him. He betrays the emperor that he's working with. So the guy is just completely hateful. By the time you actually get to fight him, you're jonesing just to kick his ass, man. <laughs> Now another aspect that's really cool about this game is that every character has their own skill set, making each of them feel like an individual. This is important because in so many art, different RPGs, they're interchangeable to be honest. With the exception of a few different magic spells that they get, you could just basically pump A1 A to A2 and interchange and you won't notice a difference. On this one, because each one of these guys have a different skills system, uh, it does force you to actually try all of them out. And the game actually does that for you. It forces you to play with each of these characters at least for like an hour so that you can get used to what they do and see if you like the skills that they provide for you. The way they do this is in certain aspects of the game, the party splits up. And sometimes, I mean, you have to split up between three or four different groups. So with the push of a button, you play group one, group two, group three, group four, and you're basically playing all of them in the same scenario. Now, this is really fun because it adds a lot of time to the gameplay aspect of it. You have uh, Terra, who's the magic wielder. She has a skill that's called trance. So when she transforms, and when she's transformed, basically everything doubles. So she has stronger magic, stronger attacks. Then you have Savin, uh, who's like a wrestler type. He has Street Fighter moves, basically, is how you do the moves with this guy. He's one of my favorites because he just does the moves. Uh, if you do them correctly, which in this game, it's so simple to do because it's made for touchscreen. It's not as hard as it was on the Super Nintendo to do. And the moves are just lethal. And they don't, they don't waste any magic or anything. So basically they're free moves and free super moves. And that's pretty much what he does. Then you have Edgar who does the tools command again. A super strong skill set that depending on the tool that you use you can attack all the enemies you have a chainsaw that does massive damage or once in a while and actually just dons a Friday the 13 mask and chainsaws and just instant kill to most of the enemies even some bosses believe it or not then you got Scion the knight who also does crazy like four to eight different attacks at once and that's only a few that I could mention right now you have the ninja you have the mage you have the artist so there's a lot of different characters that you could play this tailoring to your gameplay style the cool aspect of it is that the game does force you to explore each and every one of these characters personalities so you get to know all of them not just the main character and everybody's just a secondary character uh, to the point where it mixes in and you don't really know who the main character is towards the end of the game because uh, you're basically invested on most of them already so whoever you finish it with it doesn't really matter all that matters is just finishing and making all of them stronger now i mentioned something about i like liking the esper system or the magicite system so basically the way that system works is your characters for the most part start out not knowing any magic so the espers which are the world summons when they die they leave what's called magicite and when you pick that up that esper will give the magic power of what the esper had to any human holding that magicite so that's how you learn your spells and that's how you have your summons so every magicite you have you actually have to hold with each character and learn all of those different spells that they have so you could basically customize your character however you want or you could just learn everything 
as if they weren't strong enough already with those crazy tool commands that just basically kill everything on screen with one shot. So yeah, if you're looking for a challenging game, you're out of luck with this game. The skills commands that some of these characters have are just so overpowered. They don't use up any magic. You can willy nilly use them anytime you want. It makes the game super simple to run through. With the exceptions of a few scenarios where <laughs> You're gonna be stunned. They're gonna petrify you. For example, I fought the Ultima and that thing just completely obliterated my party like five to 10 times before I got through to him. So yeah, again, another double-edged sword here where uh, you have the characters that because they're so overpowered, you wanna explore their abilities and see what else they can do. And on the other side, it's just so easy that doesn't really provide that much of a challenge to play. Now the game takes itself pretty lightly. It has a very, a very funny sense of humor in that, for example, you get to a, to a scenario where you have to steal a guy's clothes to sneak around. When you do, you steal the guy's clothes, you just see him like completely naked covering himself. <laughs> so that was funny as hell and that's basically the end of the, of the fight when you jack his clothes and leave him naked there. <laughs> There's another little scenario that I really enjoyed where you're gonna try to rescue somebody and the bad guy leaves the guards right there, right? And the guard's like, don't worry, sir. I can go without sleep for seven days straight. And as soon as they walk out the door, the guy's already asleep, knocked out. <laughs> so I thought that was hilarious when I saw that. I'm like, okay. <laughs> I knew something like that was gonna happen. Like you knew they were ramping them up to do something stupid like that. So it was pretty funny. The opera scene is very nicely done on the Pixel Remaster. So uh, earlier I mentioned that they had a lot of great scenarios on the game. So yeah, the opera scene is one of those that's completely memorable to anybody who's played Final Fantasy VI. You know what's cool about it, it's one of the early quick time events. Yeah, you actually had to choose which line you were gonna sing so, and if you got it wrong, obviously like, that was a mistake made and you had to either restart or you got penalized for it. And unlike the SNES version, the Pixel Remaster actually got uh, voices so you could understand what they were singing when they were singing it. And that, that being said, it's not so much different from the SNES version to the, to the Pixel Remaster version where it completely changes everything. And this, they actually did upgrade the visuals quite a bit so it's very noticeable on the opera scene more so than in the entire game the updated music helps it sound so good and it never really veers far away from the original so regardless of which game you prefer playing the opera scene is one of those scenes in video games that will stick with you for years and both games will lose you in the immersiveness of it and how beautifully written it is and how fun it is and how funny it is. The whole segment just clicks together so well.
then you get Kefka poisoning an entire country and ba basically killing off the family of one of our main characters here. Then you also get the destruction of the entire planet. So for for half of the game, you're playing in, in the undestroyed version, and for the other half, the whole planet is destroyed. It completely changed the landscape, and you're relearning the map all over again. And then you have the riding the train of purgatory. So you accidentally jump on a train, and it turns out that this train is taking all dead souls to purgatory. And you're trying to get off and like the, the train isn't letting you off so what do you do you pile drive the train that's right you pile drive them <laughs> yeah so Savin has one of one of his commands blitz commands is a pile driver so yeah you actually get the whole train and you pile drive it it's funny as hell to see it happen so is the game good and good enough to be called better than Final Fantasy 7 now the game is good it is very memorable the characters are i would probably say they're more memorable than than they are in final fantasy 7. is it better than final fantasy 7? that's still up in the air personally i don't think it's better than final fantasy 7 having replayed it again now is the pixel remaster uh worth the price of admission just to get those little nifty uh, updates that they did so let me just start off with the bad if you're looking for updated graphics you're gonna be sorely disappointed because with the exception of a few particle effects and a few scenes like the opera scene there's not really much new to be had or seen on this I would probably use .mu's release of Wonder Boy the Dragon's Trap as the benchmark to rate any uh, remastered release because they did phenomenal and not just did they do great and phenomenal like I said uh, the idea that, that, that they had that with the simple push of a button you could switch from the new updated visuals to the retro version not just in graphics but in music as well so they had the updated music and they had the old retro music with the simple push of a button you could switch between them that is a novel, great idea that .mu had, and I have to give them thumbs up for coming up with that. Unfortunately, uh, Final Fantasy VI didn't do that with the graphics. They decided to keep it very close to the original content. Music, again, they kept it very close to the original content, but it worked to in their favor on that. Music soundtrack-wise, great. Graphics, not so great. And as far as gameplay goes, it remained virtually the same, so you're not going to catch much of a difference on that. So, if I were to uh, say, well, yes, it's worth it, no, it's not worth it, I would basically bring it down to you. Uh, have you played this game before? Or rather, do you own this game already in retro space? If you do, I would probably say don't waste your 20 bucks on it. Wait until it actually drops down to 5 bucks or something like that. As far as I can remember, once in a while, especially during Christmas, Square usually throws in a few sales on that and you'll probably be able to get this game for around seven or eight bucks then it would definitely be worth it if you haven't played the game at all i do recommend you playing it and getting the pixel remastered just because of the updated music and the updated uh, visuals or particle effects and just based on the fact that it'll probably be easier to get it uh, because i mean you could get it on steam you could get it on iOS you could get it on Android and play it on the go and enjoy uh, one of the most memorable Final Fantasy games ever released and lastly if you're like me and you do enjoy the music and games and you do own the Final Fantasy 3 Super Nintendo cartridge or 
even have it on the emulators I would probably still recommend it just because of the updated music it was a nice surprise for me so there you go guys Final Fantasy 6 pixel remaster if you guys like this and you guys want me to upload any more of the pixel remasters or any other retro type game that you guys want me to review don't forget to leave it in the comment section below also if you haven't done so don't forget to hit me with a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button that's all for today thanks for joining me again and as always stay retro